When you talk about the history of basketball, you definitely don't think of France. But this country has one of the richest legacies in the game. From being home to the world's oldest basketball court, to developing some of the NBA's best playmakers, on n'est pas insensible quoi, à leur force de caractère, à leur envie, à, à la volonté d'atteindre un objectif. And hosting the largest outdoor streetball tournament in the world. People are like, what the fuck is this game? This is great. Like, I want to play that. The reigning World Cup champs may have more to root for than just soccer. When you see Tony, Nicholas, and all these guys playing in the NBA, doing good, you just think, why not? Why not me? You work a lot to just do everything that you can do to, to get there. This country is known as the home of the Eiffel Tower in Le Bleu. But what about basketball? The game was brought to France way back in 1893, just two years after it was invented in the U.S. by Dr. Naismith. And with that, it brought the construction of what is now the world's oldest basketball court. Hidden in the YMCA under one of Paris's narrow streets, you'd never even know it was there. On ne voit pas du tout de l'extérieur quand on arrive. Quand on arrive, on a l'impression d'arriver dans un théâtre. Voilà, vous entrez dans la plus vieille salle de basket du monde. Alors, ce qui est très important, c'est qu'en fait, dans ce qui est ici, beaucoup de choses viennent des États-Unis. L'échelle qui est là, qui est une échelle à laquelle on se suspend par les bras pour aller d'un bout à l'autre, mais également les lattes de parquet, les bars qui sont derrière nous. Tout ça est venu des États-Unis par Paquebot en 1892 pour pouvoir construire le bâtiment. Donc c'est quand même assez exceptionnel. Et c'est un grand témoignage de l'amitié franco-américaine du moment. The thing to understand at this time, at least in France, is that basketball was also prescribed for women and girls, as seen as being a very good form of physical activity, physical fitness. Uh, in an era where many other games, such as football, soccer, were stigmatized as being medically inconvenient for women or, or too masculine. Lindsay Sarah Krasnoff is an expert on French sports. She's been studying the topic for 18 years and has an upcoming book on the subject. I think that's an important distinction to make that might not always come up in a lot of different national examples. From the get-go, basketball was always seen as a sport for girls. Women's basketball has been strong for a very long time in France. You have really famous female basketball players, including Boris's mom, Elizabeth Refiot, who are making their path. Yeah, first memory, I didn't really have any. I was just following my mom on basketball courts since I'm born, pretty much. Mom was playing and was in the French national team, and she was doing basketball here back in the 70s. Women like Elizabeth for few, and their constant success helped raise the ball for basketball in France. Because of them, young girls aren't afraid to aim for the highest goals in the sport. Take Maureen for two. At 17 years old, the confidence and maturity she displays on and off the court sets her up to lead the next generation of female basketball players. Ici, on est à Nantes, dans l'ouest de la France. On est ici en stage équipe de France U17. Et on se prépare pour le championnat du monde U17 qui va se dérouler à Minsk, en Biélorussie. Marine plays for France's U17 team, as well as playing professionally. If she continues on this path, she could be on her way to the WNBA. Euh, mon père, il était basketteur professionnel. It's funny because I saw Maureen, she was just born. That's when I started playing with her dad. I was 18 years old and I went to play in Poe in South of France and um, I play with her dad as my point guard. She 
develop in her own kind uh, of basketball and play. And uh, her dad has, was really, you know, like true point guard. And she's so different than him, you know. She's more of a flashy type of point guard. Allez, c'est parti pour l'échauffement interposte. Enfin, inter, euh, oui, euh, oui, interposte et euh, interrelationnel. OK, let's go. She's a playmaker, but she's a modern playmaker. She likes to, uh, to create for herself and for her teammates. So uh, it's a modern playmaker, like we can see in men's basketball. It's a future. It's a um, national team A uh, future. She had a lot of influence uh, also from being able to watch um, NBA games. I know she, you know, loved different NBA players that are more flashy than her dad was. Moi, mon idole au basket, c'est Kyrie Irving. C'est le joueur que je préfère, que je regarde souvent. Mais chez Kyrie Irving, ce qui m'inspire beaucoup, c'est sa créativité, balle en main. Il peut faire tout ce qu'il veut, des crosses, dans le dos, entre les jambes. Il n'est pas comme les autres. Il peut tirer de loin, il peut aller proche du cercle. Il est vraiment complet. J'essaie de reproduire ça en m'entraînant, en entraînement. Ben, moi, ce que j'aimerais, c'est faire la plus grande carrière possible. Aller aux Jeux Olympiques, tout ça. There's a certain drive, a certain maturity that you see across the board with all the players who reach this level. They're known as being uh, team players. And when you see the French players in the NBA across the board, you see that they are integral parts of their teams. Some, even though they do become stars like Tony Parker, Boris Diaw. Nick Batum, they're still very much team players who can play a variety of the different posts and still contribute towards the larger goal of the team win. That playmaker mentality you find in almost every French basketball player isn't just a coincidence. It's the product of a training system created and perfected at INSEP. The French National Institute of Sport. L'idée que que Anthony Parker ait fait la carrière qu'il ait pu faire en, en NBA a surtout puisque c'est le joueur typique de, de la formation à la française. This is where players like Tony Parker, Boris Diaw, Ronnie Terriaf, and Evan Fournier fine tuned their skills, and it's where the future generation of elite athletes gets their start. Je ne pense pas qu'en France, voire même en Europe, on ait, euh, je dirais, un campus de ce type qui puisse nous permettre d'allier autant de, 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 de sport, de temps lié au sport, avec la récupération, avec la vie quotidienne d'un jeune adolescent et la scolarité. Donc tout est fait pour la réussite de ces jeunes. Definitely in the way we learn basketball, like here in INSEP and, and some of the teams around France, here, the concept of team basketball and sharing the ball is, is very, very big in what we learn. I was playing here for two years, uh, from 16 to 18. So we're in the same class with Tony Parker, Ronnie Turiaf. We would never think that five years, six years later, we, all three of us would be in the NBA. Aujourd'hui, plus un seul Français qui a un certain niveau va se dire bon ben, j'ai envie de me présenter à la draft, ça, ça, ça ne pose plus de problème. Je veux dire c'est effectivement la génération Boris Dio, la génération euh, Parker a vraiment aidé en cela. Ah et Franck il va contribuer. On est en train de démontrer que un joueur français qui travaille, qui bosse, qui a du talent, mais il peut les jouer à une billet. Misei Dumbuya, the latest product of the Incept system. A 6'9 and 17 year old is known for his versatility and is widely projected to go top five in the 2019 NBA draft. And after watching this highlight reel, it's easy to see why. We traveled to the northern coast of France and caught up with him as he rehabs his ankle and gears up for the last season before he becomes an international sensation. I'm here, bro. I'm here. It's a great thing in English. 
Ah, anglais. Ouais. I don't speak English. I don't know. Il parle anglais. Il ose dire qu'il n'y a que 1 cm entre nous. Il ouais. n'y a que 1 cm entre nous. Il t'ose dire ça. Mais c'est quoi 1 cm C'est bon, allez, il y a 5. Ah, voilà, merci. Le respect, le respect, il est mort. Le respect, il est mort. Il est mort. Je suis parti à l'INSEP à mes 13 ans. Parce qu'en 2015, je suis à l'INSEP, tu fais KD. National 1, c'est la 3 division française. Après, c'est une vie, il faut, faut s'y habituer en fait. C'est une vie de, de haut niveau tout de suite. Et quand tu es jeune, c'est pas forcément facile. Il faut s'habituer, tu as des exigences, tu as, euh, as des contraintes. Ils m'ont pas mis de plateau Tu dis que tu vas faire Franchement, moi, c'était ma. Ça m'a beaucoup aidé. Ça m'a beaucoup aidé à grandir. Alors, c'est cool. C'est vraiment, le... <rire> vraiment le joueur avec qui on passe du temps. Parce que c'est. C'est vraiment un talent pur, de toute façon. Et en plus, doublé d'un physique qui est quand même au-dessus de la norme. Moi, je pense que la meilleure, c'est 87 ans. Hey, 2003, pas mal, non plus. On a un groupe avec Franck, Adam, Abdou. Il y a Abdou qui envoie un truc dans le, dans, dans le groupe, il envoie ça. Il envoie ça. Et Franck répond, la classe 2017. Vu que la théorie 2017, il dit que c'est la meilleure. Il dit que ça va faire. Je pense que la meilleure, ce sera 2019. Ce sera 2019, je pense. Avec euh, Oran Barra Junior, Zayan, euh, Kamredic, Bol Bol. Mm. Je pense que ce sera la meilleure. Ouais, je pense que ce sera la meilleure. Enfin, c'est de ma génération. Franck, je l'ai connu, euh, je l'ai connu, je l'ai vraiment connu quand on était champion, champion d'Europe 2017, quand on était champion d'Europe avec euh, avec les 18. Say cool's confidence comes from seeing so many of his idols and peers like Frank make it before him. Si je me si je me fais drafter le jour où je me fais drafter, ça sera, je pense que ça sera l'un des l'un des les plus beaux jours de ma vie, je pense. Émotionnellement parlant. Dans, dans tous les sens du terme, en fait. Ce serait un rêve d'accompli déjà. Ce serait un, grand, un gros, gros rêve d'accompli. Aujourd'hui, il est sur ce chemin-là pour devenir un basketteur pro. Et il avance. Getting to the NBA isn't easy. But with France producing top level talent annually, the league isn't just a fairy tale for TV. Right across the country to Strasbourg, Frank Nilakina's hometown. And you'll see traces of the NSEP mentality and training being taught to children from age four. C'est donc les jaunes, c'est Saint Joseph, où a commencé Frank. Je suis dans le club de Saint Joseph de. 65 ans, Alors, ça vous donne un peu l'idée de mon âge. Et j'entraîne depuis 50, 52 ans. Et donc euh, Franck a passé entre mes mains. Donc il avait 4 ans, 4 ans, 5 ans. Euh, donc pendant deux ans. Après, normalement, c'est jusqu'à 6 ans, les babies, mais il était trop bon, il était au-dessus des autres. En plus, il était grand, donc on l'a tout de suite surclassé en mini poussin. Delakina, nice drive to the basket, left hand. Delakina, put it right down. Frank came to basketball uh, in Strasbourg and came up through the Strasbourg youth system. You know, one of the things that's often said about him is, you know, for such a young player, he has a very high maturity level. Crossover move. Oh, the fake from Obviously, a lot of that is part of going through the French system. Le basket, c'est un jeu d'intellectuel, en fait. Et Franck en était l'image. I don't remember really the, the first time I, I dribbled the ball. I was uh, very young. I was like maybe three. But I remember going always uh, with my brothers, my two big brothers, uh, on the playground, and that was uh, just what we did to have fun. And so this is how I started, and I just fell in love with basketball. Il était beaucoup avec ses frères, qui l'ont beaucoup initié. Jouer avec eux sur un terrain en plein air dans les temps libres. Little playground. It was five minutes from where I lived. 
So it was uh, always the location where everybody in the town was uh, going there. So on the playground, I remember one thing, it was just uh, being too young to play with the uh, grown men. Just asking, can I play, can I play? And they were all saying, no, you're too young, you're too young. And one day they let me play and I played great. And they were like, oh, he's young, but he's got it. En France, euh, sur les playgrounds comme ça, y a, tout le monde vient jouer au, au street. Tu joues contre des plus vieux, alors que tu as 12 ans, tu peux jouer contre des gens qui ont, qui ont 25 ans, 30 ans, on se des, des jeunes, dès de, de, de le plus jeune âge. Ils jouent, ils jouent dans, le, dans, dans la street, ils apprennent des nouveaux moves, à des nouveaux. Euh, enfin voilà quoi, il y a. When you talk about what are the differences in basketball in different countries, one of those questions is not just who is playing, but where are they playing? And in the U.S., the common stereotypes is that it's an inner-city urban game. In France, that's not the case. It's always been a game of the more provincial cities and the countryside. Until recently, that's actually started to change. And when you look at the growth in terms of numbers of who is playing basketball and where they're growing, you're seeing significant increases in urban areas. And there's no better proof of how far the sport has spread than K-54. Held every summer in Paris, the tournament brings in over 20,000 fans year after year and has been dubbed the biggest streetball tournament in the world. The event was really started out of necessity. We grew up, we loved outdoor basketball events in the summer that were held in, in Paris. This is the new Rucker Park to the rest of the world. The tournament kind of became a mix between the sport of basketball and the culture of basketball and the music and the lifestyle. K-54, hottest international street basketball tournament on the planet Earth. What we do with K-54 has really helped popularize basketball in this country. Yeah, the K-54 has, you know, has been part of the basketball tradition and street ball for a few years now. It touched a different uh, aspect, different type of fans. Uh, that's good for the growth of basketball in Brands. The guys that we know at the French Basketball League have told us, oh, you wouldn't believe the amount of kids that come to our club saying, I want to play basketball, I want to do K-54. <laughs> the idea that these young kids have been exposed or have been interested in playing basketball, or watching basketball, or participating in the sport, thanks to the, the tournament, is really interesting. Everyone wants to see the sport grow. Everyone wants to see the culture grow. There's really a lot of togetherness that's really contagious. So with the world's biggest street ball tournament popping up just minutes away from the oldest existing basketball court, the game is continuing to make its mark on Paris and beyond. Behind us, there is a lot of young, great talent that might come into in the NBA too. And just doing great things with the national team might make our basketball culture even better. While you have a lot of youth who look up to American NBA players, they now have their own homegrown examples, whether it's Tony, Morris, Frank, who have shown that you can do it too. And with top level talent representing the past, present and future of the sport, France is continuing to make its mark on basketball.